Ming here. So I had a question from somebody regarding the use of external power from a monitor to the Blackmagic camera on the Mose Air Cross 2. In this particular case, I use an Andesine uh, 4K monitor, and that monitor has a backplate that accepts the MPF uh, style batteries. Then it also has an output port for providing power to the Blackmagic uh, camera. And you, all you need are the connectors, basically, for the HDMI, and then the associated power cord. And I'll put links for these items in the description below. So if you have a question, you can look those up. The nice thing about that is you can have the monitor uh, turned off. You don't actually have to have it running, and it'll still provide power to the camera. So that's another helpful thing for you just in case you didn't need the monitor, but you didn't have an external power pack or power supply, but you had your monitor there and you didn't really need it for um, its monitor purposes, but for its power pack purposes, that actually works really well. The only other thing that you have to worry about is cable management. It's not as bad as you think. You just have to make sure that you have freedom of movement on all axes that you're going to be using the camera. So you have to think about how you're going to be positioning the device, manipulating it, in and out and so forth, what rotations will cause any snag on the actual uh, connection to the monitor. Whenever you have a monitor, you have to do that anyway, especially if there's any cables connected to it. Now there are um, remote connections so that you can actually do this wirelessly, but you aren't <laughs> gonna get the wireless power transfer. That hasn't been implemented just yet. But overall, it's a really good solution. If you can put one of the larger 900 packs on there, and you'll get a good two to four hours uh, worth of uh, battery time. It does add a little extra weight to it, but if you're planning your shots, you're doing things ahead of time that helps minimize the amount of workload you have uh, per shot and per scene and whatever else, you can minimize just how much uh, work you're actually going to be physically doing. The other end of that is, the more you actually use this in a heavy capacity, the stronger you'll get, and the, <laughs> the better it is when you don't have all that hooked up, it's just like a breeze because you've got the strength to go through it. Like any exercise, the more you do it, the stronger you'll be, and the more precision you'll get at it. But if you do not want to go with the bodybuilding <laughs> route of carrying this camera and working it in that capacity to build strength uh, over long periods of shoots, then you really have to plan all your shots out ahead of time. You really have to make sure that everything is set where you need it, when you need it, so that you can go right to the shot, do your scene, and then set the camera down. Or pass it off between multiple people. So those are always options that you can do. I'm a shooter as well as a writer, director, cinematographer, so forth. I have to do everything that I put my people through. First things first, if you're going to demand something of somebody else, make sure you can do it. That's number one. <laughs> the other thing is, this little magic arm on here is <laughs> from Small Rig. This is a solid little beast. I mean, it'll hold heavy weight, and when you tighten that up and you lock that into place, it's locked. I mean, you don't have the uh, worry of that coming out. Uh, the only thing that you have to do on something where there's an arm like this is you want to make sure that you've got it tight, you let the weight of the monitor bear it down, and then you loosen it up, move the monitor to a higher position, tighten it, and then let it rest in position and sometimes push down on it because the Moser Air series, they have a little bit of a, a grommet in there that helps to tighten it and lock it, but also for sound uh, deadening. So it's really a good um, thing to have, but that also makes sometimes a challenging uh, situation where the monitor starts sinking right away and you're like trying to figure out what to do. Just loosen up the small rig magic arm put it to a higher position, lock it, let it rest down to the position you need. The Andesine monitor that I have here is really cheap. It's an excellent monitor. And again, it provides that power out. Uh, the only thing is I would have gotten one with the higher uh, nits. So something like a 2000 nit or something like that. Only because uh, in bright sunlight, 
you can't see the monitor as well. They do come with a sun shield, uh, does help. It's uh, just a Velcro add-on. You also then just have to make sure that the rig itself isn't bumping into it, that sort of thing. So always check full range of motion and your cable management and so forth. Everything else should be quite fine after that. And I'll put a link for a couple of the other monitors that I've uh, heard some good things about uh, and that are also much brighter. But again, if you're just looking for something cheap that is a good monitor, uh, except for direct sunlight uh, and provides the power, this little thing will do it for you and inexpensively. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that. So please thumbs up to let the Google algorithm and the YouTube algorithm know that you are favoring my work so that I can keep doing more of this. And certainly subscribe if you haven't. That helps our channel grow. Thank you.